you cannot imagine how much cycling's changed since I started. You can't dwell on regrets. You can only learn from mistakes you did or learn from things you, you didn't do. You can't turn back time, can we? If I don't win, somebody else won. And if somebody else won, they deserve to win. I love this sport. I'm more than a bike rider. I'm a fan of it. My kids are a fan of it. 2023 was supposed to be the final season in the long and illustrious career of Mark Cavendish, the greatest sprinter of all time. One last chance to win a record-breaking 35th stage win at the Tour de France. A week in, he came agonizingly close, but 24 hours later, a crash took him out of the race and the chance was gone. However, after much deliberation, Mark made the decision to continue for one more season, and we have had the privilege of catching up with him at the UAE Tour. How do you feel after almost 20 years of professional cycling? I feel good, thank you. I feel tired, but I think that might just be the age. I don't know whether that's the cycling or just the age, you know, um, and five kids. <laughs> but it's okay, I think. Uh, I still love it. I'm still lucky to to get to ride my bike as my job, you know. So, how much has cycling changed from your first pro race in 2006 to today? You cannot imagine how much cycling's changed since I started. I think there's been maybe three, four iterations of cycling. You know, um, I think you remember also like it was more closed. I think the whole world's changed with the information and things that are available. You know, uh, you raced and the race was reported on. Now it's everything you do is is like this. The cycling, because of that cycling, was it was a closer community, professional cycling. Everyone knew each other. We all knew we had the same kind of job and we were all in it together. Um, then obviously the stakes became higher. Um, there's more money involved and that changes everything in life, doesn't it? But uh, in terms of the sporting side, yeah, I think those teams came along, like Sky came along, and instead of it being slow and then fast, there was two speeds instead of slow. Yeah. Right? Like there was one constant tempo, and it changed the demographic of riders that was able to ride. You know, you had to be able to sustain a high tempo the whole day, and then. Uh, yeah, signs came in and data was able to be analysed and, and riders were no longer kind of picked on if they could win races or not, it was on how strong they were, you know, and it changed a bit then again because there's only a couple of riders could win races and now everybody is strong, you know, I know, I know. so <laughs> like now there's rider, the riders who win are also, it's not just you have to be able to race, there's guys who are strong and can race. So it's kind of gone full circle. It's just that the level's gone high because of that now. So uh, it's been massive. I've, I'm lucky that I've been able to kind of adapt to that and see it. Um, but uh, this world's apart from when I started, that's for sure. Are you sure it will be the last one, last one year in Impro Cycling? Are you sure 100%? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's my last year. I have to stop at some point. Um, I was pretty sure last year that was my last year. Obviously things change, you don't know what happens in life. Um, but you definitely have to put a definitive, ta definitive time frame on that, you know, and... Uh, yeah, I can't say for certain anything, but I can be pretty sure that... Um, the racing is fine. I love racing. I carry on <laughs> racing course. forever, you know? It's that winter, putting the winter in. I like riding my bike, but you can't just go it's out. Because the lifestyle friends. is a problem, the yeah. lifestyle. Yeah, I'm <laughs> away from home. You can't go out with your friends and ride. You train a lot on your own now. And my family's growing up, you know? Uh, I need to start seeing the kids in their sports day. I need to see the players at school. I need to give my wife a hand at home, you know? Um, you know, I've got a kind of live a real life at some point, so. We will we see you at the Giro d'Italia this year. I won't be at the Giro this year. Um, obviously have a big goal with the Tour de France 
It's a very, very difficult Tour de France. And as we know, the Giro d'Italia is always difficult. Um, I think I need as much energy as I can. Um, that's first and foremost. But also, I've had, I had some of the best days of my career at the Giro. And to be able to finish my Giro career with a stage win from the Colosseo in Rome, like it's, it's the perfect finish. Uh, I was like, I'm incredibly proud that I was able to win, a, win a, at least one stage of the Giro in every Giro that I did, you know? And uh, it's kind of a nice run to finish on like that. That photo, I have that photo. I don't have much of at home in terms of my cycling, but I have a photo of that win and uh, it's pretty special. So. Do you have any regrets? A race you, you would have liked to win? Um, I think at some point everybody has regrets, but uh, you can't dwell on regrets. You can only learn from mistakes you did or learn from things you, you didn't do. We can't turn back time, can we? Um, I think to specifically point to things, not really, because if I don't win, somebody else won. And if somebody else won, they deserve to win. You know, so that, that sport, that cycling. Um, but there's definitely things I would have done differently in my career. I think I was too trusting with people. I think aside from races, um, I was tr too trusting with, with, with people in my career. And uh, that can cause you some detriment in your life, you know? And uh, so there's definitely things I would change, but you can't go back. You're young, you live, you learn, and you can only do what you can in the future and teach your kids not to do the same thing as well, so. Who is uh, the best lead-out man you had? Um, I've had some of the best lead-out man, not just in my career, but in the history of cycling. And I'm so lucky for that. And I'm so lucky that they haven't just been teammates, they've been friends. And each one is different. To say a best is, it's not fair, it's not right. Um, they've all had qualities that set them apart from anything else. And two of them work together with me now, you know, with Michael Morkov and uh, Mark Renshaw. They're both in the team, okay, Mark's not riding, but what he brings to the team helps not just me, not just Michael, but helps the whole team, you know, and, uh, and yeah, I don't know who's the best or why, but, I'm very lucky to have worked with some of the people I have, that's for sure. Who is uh, the most uh, difficult uh, rival uh, you have faced? Marcel Kilt, without doubt, is the most difficult rival I've ever had. Like, he... It took me at least two years to be able to even beat him. He's just so strong. So strong. Like... You can't figure out a way to beat them. But I could always try and figure out what other sprinters did and what I had to do to be able to do how they usually moved and that. With him, it, it took a long time, you know? Um, and uh, yeah, he won some incredible races and he's a man mountain. He, super nice guy. We have a really good relationship. Um, Wait, it was a hard one to beat, <laughs> I was sure, yeah. What's the best uh, piece of advice uh, ever given to you? Bradley Wiggins taught me out of pursuit. Taught me how to do a pursuit. And uh, without that, I'd have never won an Olympic medal. Like, I kept hitting the same times before the Rio Olympics. And I didn't do that much track anymore. I didn't at that point, you know, but the individual pursuit was part of the Omnium and Elia Viviani won. And I was hitting the same kind of times for a year. And it was just in a training session. And Bradley, we sat down after, after an effort, and Bradley's like, try this. I'm not gonna tell you what it is, because it's one of his secrets. He said, try this. And I went up straight away and just smashed the lap times I was doing. And uh, I think in the pursuit event, I got second and those points got me a medal at the Olympic Games and uh, I think Brad had learned that from Chris Boardman and uh, it was 
it was super vital, super, super vital. I'm so happy he did that, you know. From 2017 to 2020, you had a very difficult seasons. Would you have ever imagined uh, doing a Tour de France 2021 at such high level? Um, in all honesty, yes. I knew I could still ride the tour and ride at a good level. I just, the hardest thing was not doing it. It was getting the opportunity to do it, you know? Um, the hard years in my life, Look, I don't profess to have the hardest years of my life because there's so many people have harder times than I've ever had, you know? Um, but uh, the hardest points, the biggest thing I learned was you can only control what you can do, you know? And decisions or things that other people do, they might have an influence on what you can do, but uh, you can't change that. And if you spend time getting upset and worrying about that, that you can't continue what you can do. So just concentrate on what you do. And uh, if you do it enough, things will work out, you know? Um, and that's all I could do was concentrate on what I could do train as hard as I could, rally a team around me and, uh, and put myself in the best position to do that. And uh, through circumstances, they would go the tour and uh, I knew then with my form, and the absolutely phenomenal group of boys that I had there with me, that we'd be successful. Do you want to see what Sagan said in January 2021? So at the beginning of the season 2021. Yeah, yeah, okay. Cosa pensi di Cavendish e come vedi il suo ritorno alla De Koenig? È molto bene. Sto guardando che Marco è una persona che la devi come si dice in italiano, ammirare. Ammirare? Sì, ci sta. Per quello che ha fatto, per i risultati per... che ha ottenuto. No, è quello che fa. Ah, ok. Ok non solo per i risultati, ma per com'è come Qual essere umano. Quello che fa. Quello che fa, ok. Perché io in mia posizione non riesco a trovare energia per continuare. Invece lui è sempre okay. là che vuole combattere con il mondo. Ok, ho capito, okay, adesso ho capito. Okay. È quello che okay. è da ammirare su di lui. Ha ancora voglia di lottare e quindi di, di chiudere poi anche in bellezza la carriera. Quindi sì. tutto rispetto. Massimo rispetto per Cavendish. No, massimo rispetto e anche vedrai che vince qualcosa. Vedremo. So, what do you think about Peter? Uh, you know, we've had, we had tough times together. But we're actually super close now. Um, that's incredible. That's the champion talking, you know. He's, that's, that's warmed me so much. That's warmed my heart, man. I, I never knew that. I never knew you did that interview, I've never seen it. Um, oh, special, bless him. I've got a message him now, tell him. That's, that's super nice. I'm, I'm so happy, so happy that I proved him right, do you know? Like, yeah, he's a... Uh, um, that, that's, that's super <laughs> nice. I don't know what to say on a speech, just like, bless him. Did you, did you forgive Peter after uh, the bad crash of uh, 2017? Yeah, of course. Like, look, we move on, we grow up, you know? And uh, that's, to forgive is, it, 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 there was always circumstances in there, you know? Um, but we have a super good relationship, like, and that's really nice, you know? Like, it was so good for this sport, so good for this sport. And uh, I love this sport. I'm more than a bike rider, I'm a fan of it. My kids are a fan of it. And, uh, and what he brought to the sport, I can only be grateful for that. And uh, yeah, same things like that, how he is as a person. Like, right, he's a legend, that's super nice. 
Thank you, Mark. Uh, thank and you. Uh, good luck for your last uh, year as a pro rider. Thanks so much. Thanks. <laughs> Huge thanks to Mark for his time and candidness in this interview. If you've enjoyed it, please give this video a big thumbs up. And we, like you, will be watching his every move in the build-up to the Tour de France.